Hey everyone, it's Lane with Crafty Life Mom, and I am back with another video. So it's been a minute since I have filmed a video, and I thought it would be fun to kind of kickstart getting back into making and sharing craft videos with you guys with a craft room look or a craft room tour. So today we're gonna do that. We are going to do a walkthrough through my craft room, which is behind me. I have done a lot of changes in the last year or two. I'm not really sure um, how long it's really been since the last time I've done a craft room tour. I know when I upgraded to my dream box, which is like the big craft cabinet that I have in here, I shared a lot of details about that cabinet, but I'm not really sure that I have done an overview of my craft room and all the things that I have in it. Um, I've taken things out. I've changed out craft island tables. So yeah, it's been some time and I've done a lot of things since the last time I've shared my space. So we're gonna get into my maker space or my craft room space right now. Okay guys, so we are standing outside of my craft room and I don't know if I've even shared this part of it before, but these are these tall French doors that I have that lead into my craft room. And my husband actually installed these doors. We bought them off of Facebook Marketplace when we kind of like took the craft room and made it the like craft office. So, or the crafts, the craft space, the office space, I don't know. So this like room is kind of right off of our entryway. We put these doors in. Um, I say we, but it was my husband. He's never done it before, and I think he did a pretty good job. I'll show you on the inside. There's some, some pieces of trim that we've never actually finished. So we do need to um, probably do something about that, but inside is what matters, and so that's what I wanna show you guys. Um, is my space so and my door does squeak but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a little pan of the room first and then kind of talk to you about everything in here so this piece of furniture let's start with this it is fairly empty and it is a lazy Susan type of thing let me see if I can zoom out here or back up maybe I don't know if it will let me um Let's see, I'm gonna go further out. Oh, I don't know why it's not doing it. Okay, so anyway, let me spin it. So right now it's completely empty. I used to have all of my like embroidery threads in here. Um, you can no longer get this piece of furniture. It was made by the Scrapbox Dreambox company. So it used to be the original Scrapbox. Now they are called Create Room. So I this website is not even their website anymore. And I will kind of show you what I mean by that, but they changed. Like they rebranded and they updated their name, but they were the creators of this cool piece of furniture. And I don't really use it now that I've emptied it, but I don't know that I have space for it. So I'm not really sure if I want to keep it. It is a pretty awesome thing. And I know that I'll always buy craft materials. Um, so it's kind of like empty storage, which is always nice to have, but yeah. So what I do still keep in it is my sheets of heat transfer vinyl and, and scraps. So like I have full sheets in here, but I also have like scrap vinyl in here and they're all in these like plastic zipper pouches. They have these nice pockets in here, which so I could put like labels in there. Or I could put like, you know, unfinished projects in there, which is really nice. Um, and they fit perfectly into these, um, divider slats okay so this like piece of the furniture I absolutely love there's way more than what I'm using I'm using like nine or ten of them and I believe there's like 15 of them so you can see they're like empty and they just have some like random things right there um I don't know I love this but like I said I would I I'm not using the whole cabinet so yeah, that's a work in progress still, but it is such a beautiful thing. I just don't know if I'm going to sell it or what I'm going to do. So more to come on that. And look, I told you, there was my piece of trim that we never finished. So 
no judging, right? Because we built this like doors and the wall that's behind me. So that has never changed or haven't finished fully. So then this, we built this chalkboard um, to kind of just have on the wall. I thought I was going to use it like a to-do list kind of thing. It's probably six or seven foot, six foot tall, long skinny chalkboard. I just have it hanging there. And this barn door, we also built it in the space that I'm in. And it's like nine foot, maybe this, this door, because the ceilings in here are 10 like to 12, because there's a whole big tray ceiling, which is so nice. It, you know, it's an odd shaped room. Um, and it, like I said, it used to be our dining room. So, um, and you can kind of see a little bit of where we like added the walls there. So yeah, it's not perfect. We did our best, but anyway, so we built the barn door and it slides perfectly over the chalkboard there to kind of like, I don't know, just have something there and write things, but you know, I have never done it and you can see my kids have kind of wrote their names or their fingers in it. So yeah, I don't know. This little corner area right here is still a work in progress, but for the most part, everything else in the room, I'm completely, totally happy with. So I'm gonna keep scanning around and just kind of show you the entire room. And then there is my dream box, which I have updated again, which I love, love, love this dream box. Um, it's just such a dream. And so I added the peel and stick wallpaper. Um, and I'll get to that in just a minute. Like I, I love this piece. It's my favorite. So I want to work my way back around the room here and I'm trying to keep this pretty steady. I'm so sorry. I don't want to make anybody sick. So on the left side over here, and I shared a while back, it might've been two years ago when I took this craft or this room, right? We made it the craft room. It had the dining room. So it had this arch in here and there's a video. I will try to link it. Um, where I put this faux brick here and then we painted it and made it like kind of part of this space where it was just like a neat detailed wall. So I've always had this, um, not always had this specific craft island, but I like the idea of having a table here that's a craft island and I sometimes have it this way and then other times I have it turned. And so far, this is the layout that I love the most. Um, having it angled like this or to, you know, on its side versus flush up against the wall because this side it carries, you know, has been storage in it and then the other side is where you sit. So on either side are these two glass cabinets and all of this furniture right here, by the way, is from Ikea. Um, I will try to link it down. It's hard to say their names. So I'll try to put it in the description box below um, where everything is, like mostly everything in my craft room. I will try to provide links um, to everything. And if there's something I don't mention, please feel free to give me a message or leave a comment and I will do my best to provide and update those links. Okay, so in this first cabinet right here, um, I have a lot of my um, like notebooks and specialty papers in here. I have, um, like office supplies, you know, labels. I have a couple of clear empty bins there. I plan to store some things. I keep like stationery in here, like extra staples and tape and that sort of thing. And then it houses my silhouette cutting machine the Silhouette Cameo 4, and I have some old Silhouette pins there. I've never really used, but I just have never had the heart to get rid of them, so they kind of just have their happy little home here. And then in these three bins, which I believe I got from Target, or maybe it was Walmart. I think it was Walmart. Target and Walmart both sell bins like this, and I love these. I love the gold detailing on here. So um, I just, I don't know, I just thought they were so pretty with the white and the ivory, kind of went with the cabinet. And so in each of these bins, I have different kinds of blanks um, for crafting. These were kind of given to me, but I thought they would be fun for like 
covering with vinyl or something and, you know, personalizing them. They're those beach spiker things where you take them to the beach, you put it in the sand, and then it's like a cup holder for your drink. And then I have cups. I used to do a lot of cups for people, glittering them, putting decals on them. They're just quick and easy gifts that you can make. I also have like different glasses, so you could do like etching, glass etching. So I keep cup blanks in there. Then in my middle one, I just have like random things. Like I have Christmas socks. Like there's always a party where we have a Christmas sock exchange. So I, <laughs> this is so funny, but I keep the socks that I get um, from the previous year. And then they're the socks that I take to the party next year. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so there's the ones I got this year. And then if there's a sock exchange party I go to, then next year I will take those. Um, and then we usually put like little gifts with them or like, you know, body wash soaps or something like that. Then I have these fun other pair of socks, um, that have ice cream on them, super cozy, but they're more summertime. I have hats in here, canvas tote bags, just things like that, that I could pull together for a quick and easy gift if I wanna make one or DIY something for someone. And then the same kind of goes in this bin. It's kind of a hodgepodge, but it's more of like school supply type things or like for teacher gifts. I'm a teacher myself, so um, you know, I've stockpiled some things in here um, that I've just, you know, are perfect for gift giving. So in these three bins are blanks for that. Then down below here, I have a couple of things happening. So on this shelf right here, as you can tell, it's paper. And so this is kind of a new organization that I have. Um, right here are some of my notebooks that I use pretty frequently. And then there's some folders that I have there. But in this bin, I have a bin. So I love doing this idea like a bin within a bin for organization and storage, especially in my craft room. And so in this first bin, these are from the container store, I have all of my scrapbooking paper um, that is mostly like full sheets, except for this, I think it's two folders worth. Okay, so yeah, this first folder, which I need to kind of cut this piece because it's kind of tall. This first folder is like all scrapbook paper scraps so they're not full sheets they've been used and then in the second folder is all my eight by ten pattern paper that has not been used and there is pretty much a full sheet of paper in it so i know it's hard to see but you can see that there and then behind it is all of my papers and paper pads organized by pattern or type so like you can see my glitter there's my paper pads, there's pattern papers, and then there's like these seasonal papers. You can see like the Christmas, oh, there's a gl random glitter, um, fall, and it's just kind of like, then it's July, and then there's like some metallic. And so I kind of have my paper stash that's larger sheets right there, and then to the right of it, I do have my paper punch. I have this little guy from Ikea and it holds all of my like Astro Brights paper or cardstock. So if you're a teacher, you know this paper is used a lot um, in school. And I don't know why I don't necessarily keep this at school. Sometimes a project idea will come up and I will have the paper at home to quickly make the thing that I'm going to need for like a lesson or for like projects for my kids. Um, this is like the cardstock in that bright color. I have some random leftover gold paper here. It's like a shimmery paper we used for when I helped a friend DIY her wedding invitations. And then I have another pack of paper from Astro Brights. So it's just kind of like, I don't use this paper a lot. It's not my go-to, but I have this stash in case I need it. Um, and then of course, at school, I have a whole nother set for school. Then moving down in the bottom, I have all of my like bigger wood blanks and crafting like items. 
So I got on a kick for Mackenzie Childs for a little bit and a lot of my crafts have the Mackenzie Childs brand look. So she has, so like she's famous for this painted checkered pattern. It comes in like black and white check and the blue and white check. And so I purchased her napkins. If you check out this website, it's very expensive hand painted enamel items. And I bought napkins to do craft projects with for like dupes, right? So I did do a few of those. Um, so I have the leftover napkins. I just can't part with them. I have little easels, things to paint, paper plates for painting, um, all of that sort of thing there. I have some clipboards. I have wood blanks for projects that, you know, I'm going to do, or I thought I do, or I just thought would make a cute something project. Um, all in there. So it's like the bigger pile of wood blank type of things. Like even down the bottom, you can see there's like ornaments and Dollar Tree houses. So when the mood strikes to craft something or create something, I kind of have like a little go-to stash. And I really need to start crafting my stash because... I'm finding that, you know, if it sits for a while, I never use it or I never will use it. So I either need to craft those things or get rid of them. And I've kind of done that through the last, you know, year or so, like removed some things out of my craft stash and like held on to some things. So I think moving into like the second and third quarter for the year, I'm going to be doing like a craft my stash, maybe kind of challenge, right? So yeah. I'll have to do that. So that is the first cabinet. And I updated the knobs on this. It didn't come with the gold. I just, I liked this gold. And so I painted these knobs. They were silver. And it kind of goes really well with my bins. So, okay. So moving on to my craft island. I love, love, love this craft island. I actually had a larger one before I had this one and I loved the larger one and you might even notice it in some of like my Instagram photos but it was almost just too big for the room or too big for the space I used to turn it this way like how I have this one and it came out at a good distance and it had some great storage in it but it had like where you could only sit one person on this side and one on the opposite side and I very rarely have people over to craft with me. Sometimes they come and like pick up something or, you know, and they may come over and craft with me, but we're usually like standing around the island and crafting. So it just didn't make sense to have it the way that that island was. And when I saw this at Ikea, I just, I loved it because this side was for storage. That side is for like sitting and crafting. So I decided to sell the other one and I purchased this one from Ikea for about the same money that I sold the other one for. So it was almost a total wash. And then I upgraded the storage and purchased these pink metal bins from, um, from Target. And I love these. I love the soft pink of them. Um, they have these nice like little, uh, I don't know, these these like rail things where you could like probably like hang it from like a shelf or something. I don't know. I just love the locker tote of it. So let me talk about what I have going on in here in storage wise. So recently, well, I don't want to say recently, but maybe in the last like few months, and this is probably why I haven't made videos, but in the last few months, I've really got into watching other makers make handmade cards. And so for the last few months, I have been buying card making supplies and I have yet to like finish my first card. I've played around with some stamps. Um, I've bought some stamps. I've bought some inks. I've bought some smaller papers. I've bought some embossing folders and I did have some like embossing things in my crafting stuff, but it was like in the back, like I never touched it or used it. And so I've kind of brought those things back out and cleaned it out um, and kind of organized it. So I'm going to go through what I have going on in these bins. And these are just like a working progress, but they are 
mostly intended for card making type of supplies. So that's kind of like the zone that I have with these bins and the storage that's happening here. This bottom bin, as you can see, it looks like it's for a kid and that's because it is. This is the one bin <laughs> that my children have in the craft room. It has their crowns, their markers, their pencils, scissors, and glue and glue sticks. All the things that they can use to create and then anything else that they want to use, they will need to you know, ask me for so that I can make sure that they're not using up you know, some of my more expensive supplies on something that, you know, they may not tend to keep forever or whatever. So that is their bin. Then moving on down here, I have just some like random seasonal crafting things that I've picked up. Um, these are from the Dollar Tree, these little um, candy jar things. I have some spring and Easter um I have some fabric here from the Dollar Tree, and then I have these like little wood cutouts, and I think I want to do a banner for spring and Easter. I'm not really sure. I've seen these before. I've used these before, so I just picked up some because I wasn't sure how many I had, and I noticed that these came in a pack of 10, whereas in the past, those typically came in a pack of five, so I have those that I've picked up waiting for me to craft with. Then moving on to this bin, this box is a card making kit that I picked up at Michael's and I will try to link that. Um, I, I've actually played around with this kit, making some things and then I actually bought a second kit and made a few cards there. And these are just the remaining embellishments that I haven't yet figured out where or how to store them. I have some other embellishments in another place so I probably just need to like take this whole kit and put the things away and repurpose this bin, maybe that box, something like that. And this bin is all of my adhesives. So I have like little tiny glues, sticky sticker makers. I have my um, sticky thumb in here. I will try to link that down below. I have extra rolls of tape from the Dollar Tree. I have create a sticker. I bought these a long time ago and I just, I really haven't used them. They go with this and you can put like a little um, embellishment through and it instantly makes it a sticker. And I just, honestly, I forget that I have it. So I've moved it out to the front in this bin and I thought it would be perfect with my card making supplies. So then moving up to the top row here, I have some different things going on and I do intend to put labels on these, but what I'm going to do, I'll go ahead and show you. In this bin, I have all of my smaller pattern papers. Um, some of my more recent ones are on the front and then some of the ones that I've had for years, they have been made for making cards and I just never done that and it's so funny how we like circle back into our crafting like what we think we're gonna keep doing and then we kind of stop and then I get back to it and so now I've bought some more recent things that are a little bit more on trend so my goal is to get into card making a little bit more this one was just such a pretty paper from pink fresh and I don't even think I have it open all the way but look at those patterns in there Anyway, so we're gonna get to that. I'm hoping to do some videos with card making um, because I think that would be fun. And then here is an embarrassing amount. Let me just pull this one out. When I tell you guys I have been buying card making supplies, this is what I mean. <laughs> These are all stamps that I have bought after watching other YouTubers and going to craft stores with Klingon stamps. I've gotten some of these in like planner type things before in the past and I just never knew what to do with them. I have a ton of these poly stamps. I think that's what they're called, poly cling stamps. I'm not sure. That I have purchased over the years and within the last few months. And I need to somehow organize these into a system or label them by type. And I, so that's the other thing. I've been watching 
some videos on how to do that. There's dies in here so you can cut out the stamp once you stamp it. Um, so I have just a lot of neat, fun things in here and I need to get to doing that. Um, I have purchased this wa waffle flower craft die so you can cut your card panels down. And then there's more dies and things back here. And so I know some of you are probably just screaming at me to get started. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think I enjoy watching the videos and I'm just sometimes intimidated to create, but I have a clear block here. I think I need to get a few more. I'm not really sure. There is um, another cover plate die, so you can do like a texture on the cardstock. So yes, this needs some help and organization and it's coming um, soon to where I can hopefully start uh, creating and showing you guys that. I think one of the reasons that like held me up is just because I was working on my craft space and like going through things slowly over the last few months. And so now I feel like I'm ready to start really creating and getting back into the video sharing. I do have a few embossing folders. Um, I did a little bit of embossing with leather in the past, so that's why I have some of these really tiny ones. And then I have a few other embossing cards in here. So this bin is going to be for embossing, um, which looks like really like a lot of fun to do. And then in this one, I plan to do stencils. And so I think this is like literally the only stencil I have. It's just like a polka dot type stencil. And I bought this little binder to try and organize the stencils in. Um, and then there's these sheets I bought, but they're not the right size. So anyway, I'm thinking that's how I'm gonna store the stencils. So that is pretty much what's going on in the Craft Island card making. If you notice right here, I have my lights and my like stand that I do for like overhead video recording, which I absolutely love. This is like the remote to the light and it just kind of brightens up the space and I can kind of move this light like however I need to, to kind of shine on my project. Um, a few months ago, I added this pegboard system, um, mainly for like looks and like kind of quick grab and go things it's a combination so I'll just kind of show you briefly I have a glue gun up here with the glue sticks and then I have some chalk markers here and I thought that was a good place for them with these acrylic type of holders um, this funky little pen just has like a decoration um, for the chalkboard that is over there and of course I still don't use them I have quick little ribbon for like gifts and then I have my transfer paper roll out here for adhesive vinyl for a quick easy grab because I feel like I can make a decal I have it right here I can put it down on the craft table and go and then I have this like shorter um, like more of a, a less tacky type of transfer tape right there regular packing tape and then just this cutie little wall right here with these colors that I'm just vibing with I have a calendar here which it still says February and we are not in February anymore so I didn't need to do that. I have a ruler here. I have this little remote. It actually turns on some of the lights in my craft room. And then I have this paper towel holder that I added so I can have a quick, easy like paper towel to clean up any messes that happen. Um, so then on my crafting table, I have this glass crafting mat, which is magnetic. And I absolutely love using this. Um, I got this for my birthday from my mom about four or five months ago and I, I use it but like I'm also like careful about using it because I just it's glass and I don't want to worry about like cracking it or doing anything too rough on it but I did purchase some of these magnets. Um, I got this from watching um, Kathy Makes a Card. I'll link her channel down below and or Kathy Ziltsky I guess I should say I think that's the name of her channel and Beth Adili. Um, Bethany from Beth Adili. That's her channel. I love watching their craft videos and card making. And they're actually the two people that inspired me to start purchasing all of the things for card making. So it's funny because a lot of the things that they have in their craft room, I kind of already had to. So 
Um, all right, so here is the crafting carousel. I actually have two of these. I have one in my kitchen, so all of my family can use their pens and like highlighters in there and not come grab my tools. So in this, I have just um, paint sponges. I have this adhesive little mat for my glue, for my glue gun. I have this little, um, I don't know what you call this little holder thing. Sometimes I put tweezers in here or little tiny scissors, but I've kind of moved that to my planning supplies. I have all of my Cricut and Silhouette picker tools here or like picker upper tools, little spatulas. I have this little thing I picked up from the Dollar Tree that you put nail polish in, but it was just like a great thing for weeding. I have scrapers for, you know, taking the vinyl little squeegees. Um, I just recently purchased this and added it. It's from Pink Fresh. It's for when you're stamping your stamp like in a misty and you, you hold it down. I have um, my heat gun in here and my brayer tool, my hole punch, um, more tools, more pens and pickers, um, scissors, all kinds of fun stuff. This little ruler that is like on a hinge here for like a right angle. I love that. These Cricut scissors, this fabric cutter. I have some Erin Condren um, pins here. Some of my favorite tweezers, some of my favorite pins to use while planning um, with some fun colors. I do have some paint brushes and yes. So this is like the everything you could probably reach and grab for is in this little guy and I got this one from Michaels there's extra blades um and yeah it's just the most handy little thing ever and I feel like if you're a crafter glue gun finger protectors if you're a crafter you need one of these on your craft table and I just absolutely love this setup and I love when it's clean like this like I don't keep stuff on it I try to like break my crafts supplies that I've purchased home and like put them away or do the crafting that I'm gonna do. Um, it doesn't always work out that way. Like I hate unloading it onto here, but I absolutely love how this is set up. This is the back side of the island. So you can put two chairs here, but I just kind of keep my chair in the middle. And then I have this ivory cream chair with a gold base. It's a counter height chair. It's a comfy one. I used to have two bar stools and I put those on Facebook Marketplace and I purchased this one because those two did not swivel and this one did and it's adjustable. So I absolutely love that. Um, and it's perfect the way I have it right here in the room. So I'm gonna back up and just kind of show you now where we're at. Okay. So moving on to the second cabinet, I have like all the things for fabric and sewing and those sort of things or like heat press kind of things. So I'm gonna open this cabinet up and kind of just scan that for you. It says be happy, crafty life mom. So I took the time, I don't know, maybe six or seven months ago to organize my fabric like this. So most of my fabric used to be in bins that were similar to this in that first um, Lazy Susan cabinet that I showed you. And I could really only see the fabric that was in the front, similar to how these are. And um, that was fine, but I just couldn't see like what fabrics I had, like if I liked them still, like just all those. So what I did was I bought the comic book boards that every fabric person tells you about. And I spent a day, I think it was, to go through my stash and put them on the cards and then kind of organize them in this rainbow like order color. And I absolutely love it. I love the way it looks. It just is pretty. It looks good on a shelf like that. Um, so I can see everything and I can pull it out and it's just when I go to do like any kind of appliques for embroidery, there's all my fabric and I can see it. Up here I have this big jar of scrap fabrics that were some of my favorites that I've used over the years and I kind of just throw them in there to kind of fill that jar up. I forget to reference it sometimes for something, but 
Um, I just, I think it's fun to have like a scrap jar. So I have that. This little dish right here is the dish that holds all of the um, letters for my little letter board there. And then I have my Cricut mug press. Okay, so that is that part of the cabinet. Then right here, like I said, I have these bins. These fabrics right here are kind of like single squares or they're like smaller fat quarters that just didn't fit enough on a board. So I organized them again, like right here. And they're perfect for appliques. So I kind of try to use this first before I go up. And then this one is kind of like just unique fabric, like faux furs and like terry cloth type stuff. So there was a time I was making gnomes a lot. And so I needed to make their beards. And so this is the fur that is left over for hopefully a project one day where I will need fur. In these two bins, I have, which I'm not gonna really open this one. I have fabric markers in here and like big pieces of black fabric um, that just look too bulky on a card. So I just kind of have it there because it's just, it's just black. And then in this one, I believe, what do I have in here? Oh, I have all of my like bigger ribbon spools right in here like for wreath making or making bows. And then I just have some of these like terry towel cloth things in here. So that is that. Sorry, I apologize. I'm doing this one handed. And I know that's not the best, but that's what I have. Okay. So moving on to these bins. Again, on the other side, these were full of blanks. On this side, they're also blanks, but they are all t-shirts. So this bin is full of... Um, it's got felt sheets in it, so if there's like something I wanna kinda of stitch out a design ahead of time, I can kinda of test it on the felt. And then I have like all kids' shirts and baby onesies um, that I have had in my stash over the years. When I first um, kinda of like started my crafting channel and blogging journey, like Crafty Life Mom, I, I did shirts and orders for people all the time, um, especially locally, and so I was stashing blanks. And so this is what, these three bins is pretty much what is left from that part of my side business here, my Crafty Life Mom business. And so I have them, again, if there's a, you know, like a gift I need to make, um, hopefully, you know, I have a little notice, not too quickly, then I have them, I can do that. For someone and it's been nice to kind of have these when someone asks for something and I'm able to do it for them or I want to do it for them but kind of don't really do online orders anymore for shirts I don't really um, sell on my website anymore um, products that I have to like package and ship out I do but I don't so it's just it's not as my major part of my business anymore so um, again, I have shirts in here. A lot of them are like my size or my mom's size. Um, and they're just like random colors. And if I feel like I need a shirt to make for an event, like for myself, I have a stash that I can just go to and then whip it out on the Cricut and my heat press and boom, I have a shirt ready to go for the event. Um, being a teacher, I sometimes do make shirts for my team. So I just did about 10 shirts, no, 13 shirts for my team the other day, and I should have filmed that and showed that to you guys, but I didn't. So anyway, I need to do that more often. Um, down here is some more miscellaneous supplies. I have my Cricut Joy in here. I don't always pull that out, but I like the idea of being able to take a crafting machine on the go. I don't really craft on the go, but like vacation or going to like places like that, or this is fun to like kind of take to school if I need some quick labels. I have my Easy Press. I have my big roll of butcher paper for the sublimation um, prints that I do because I have a sublimation printer. And then this little basket is full of like cords, lights, like other cameras, headsets and things, like electronic type of things for video making, which I'm still not an expert at, but you know, it's always a work in progress. And then down here is like larger vinyl or mainly like um, patterned peel and stick wallpaper. 
And then my stencil roll, it's such a huge roll. I have it down there as well in one of those containers from the container store. And then I have my Easy Bow Maker. I was really getting into making bows over a year ago or so. I bought that and I have still yet to have really used it um, because it was funny, like when I was getting into the big bows, I kind of did them by hand. And then I kind of turned and went into like a more minimal look. And so I have it for when I'm ready to move back into big bows. But yeah, so this is that cabinet. And again, it has the gold knobs on it as well. And then moving on to the little corner nook here, I have this little wall where I have this lovely quote. Um, I just love this. I forget where I found that. I think TJ Maxx many, many years ago. And I just, it's like, I don't know. It's like my life philosophy. Like this is your life to create and never stop learning and be true who you are. And so I just feel like it was the perfect thing to have hanging up in my craft room. It's such a great reminder and I absolutely love it. Um, on this little pegboard system, I have these blender brushes that I have picked up, as you can see, I have not used them, but I am planning to do a little card making soon. Like I feel like I finally have all the things to make a really cool, cute, and decent card. So I have that right there. Okay, so moving on down, I have on this pegboard, I actually got this pegboard from Target. It's a great little pegboard. I love the colors and the aesthetic of it. And I felt like this wall kind of needed something right here. So this was like the perfect thing to put here. Um, hanging on the wall, I have like a three-way hook where I have a couple aprons for messy crafting. And I have my Bible study bag where I have my Bible. Sometimes I will journal in them. And so in there I have some of the, like a little tote bag that has like the pins and things that I use for it. So it's just a great little place to hang those extra items. And then I think in the back, I just have this cute little tote for like, I don't know if I need to craft or something on the go. It just was cute. And so I loved it being there. Um, but back on this pegboard, I have from Paper and Glam, their seasonal living bucket list that is by the month. And I just love this because it kind of tells you like all the things related to the month and like holidays to celebrate and just that kind of sort of thing. So it's fun. It is by the year and she sells these where you can have them printed, half letter size. I decided instead of putting them in my planner to punch them and laminate them and put them on this little peg so I can kind of just have a glance of like seasonal living type of activities and fun things. So over here, I have my mittens that I use sometimes for the mug press, um, hot, hot projects like with the heat press, that sort of thing. And it's really easy um, to have these kind of handy so I don't burn my hands. Um, moving on down, I have this little basket that kind of snaps into the pegboard. It actually comes with the pegboard um, that Target has. And so I have just a couple of different pin cups in here little um, spray bottle for water and alcohol because you never know when you might need that crafting. And so I just kind of have it resting in that pegboard. Then moving on down, I have this crafting cart. I actually purchased um, the cart from Michaels. It's a little bit longer, like wider than the normal crafting carts. And I like it because it's really narrow and um, Right now, it's just, it's kind of like a working progress of what it stores, but on the bottom, it has my mink machine and my laminator. Um, you can see I have some wipes there. In the middle tray, I have my label maker, and in the back, I have some cards and cardstock, my spell binders, um, embossing and die cutting um, machine, I guess. I guess it's a machine. It's not powered, right? So it's like a hand crank machine. I have this little bag in here, but um, yeah. And then up here, I have some of my more recent purchases where I have bought all of these um, uh, markers that are used for like card making when you're coloring in your stamps. And so I fell in love with the pastel colors when I first got these and then I purchased the regular colors. So now I have all of these beautiful markers and they're dual tipped. Um, they're by the brand, 
I'll link them down below. Oh, you who? I don't know if I'm saying that right. Oahu, oh who? I don't know. It just sounds Hawaiian to me. Um, but yeah, they are lovely. They have a bigger tip on one side. And let me see if I can show you guys. Yeah, there's the bigger tip. And then they have a more fine tip on the other side. So um, I absolutely love, love these. Um, so far from what I'm saying from like having used them. I haven't used all of them, um, but I even did a project for my son for Book Character Day. He was um, the bad guys, um, like the, the bad guys book. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that book series, but kids love those. And he was like this, the character that had like the shark looking head. And so it's like a white gray um, character, but on the edges of the head, like we, we made it like a face mask like that he holds with like a stick it had some like gray shading. And so I used some of these grays to actually do some of that shading on the card stock, on the cardboard. So that was kind of fun. And I was so happy that I had these um, because I purchased them for card making and I haven't done a lot of that, but I found other crafting reasons to use them. And then this cute little um, rotating, um, what do you call this? Lazy Susan, I guess. This is from Target, um, and I just love it because then I can move it over to the crafting table when I'm making a card and um, have all the markers there ready to go. I have my mini um, paper cutter, which I had the bigger one of this, and then I saw Bethany using this miniature one, and I was like, oh, I have to have the small one too. Um, and it's been really handy for like just some basic projects that I have that have nothing to do with card making. So I like that I have it right here nice and handy. And I actually saw her video where she put her cart together. And so I kind of like organized the top of mine similar to like just quick, easy grab and go type of card things. So yeah. And this bin I think is from maybe the container store. I'm not sure. Um, when I was looking for organizing things, I don't know. I found that. Um, I have my, um, Martha Stewart bone folder thing here. I haven't hardly ever used this. I did a long, long time ago. I honestly don't remember where I purchased this. I don't even know if you can get this one, um, anymore. And I did chop the little thing that like clips right into it um gosh I can't remember where I purchased this but um I brought it back out and put it with the card making things so that I do um have it um like I said when I get ready to do that right I have my extra plates here for the spellbinders um little machine I have the misty machine I have this little extra mat um, like a self-healing mat that's from the Dollar Tree, which is kind of handy to have. And then the Misty, which I've used a handful of times in card making. And I know now that they make a mini Misty, which I feel like for card making, that may be the route to go to have like more control. Um, because there's definitely like a learning curve. And so in just my playing around, not filming anything, um, card making wise, and like I said, it's been very little, like hardly. Um, it's not like the easiest thing to do, even though the Misty is something that helps you get it straight. Um, right here, I have this little um, rag, which it's hard. I need to put more water in there because it's kind of like formed a shape. But you can see I've used it a little bit with wiping off my stamps. And then this is like a, I think it's a salt holder. Um, I'm not sure. Again, this was like another recommendation I bought. Um through watching card makers channels and they store their little um chamois in there for card making and to try and keep it like moist which you can clearly see i probably had it up or something air got to it and and how it has dried in that shape um and then right here i have some blank card panels that i have just purchased from michael's um just white cardstock, and I have also the long ones as well for like making a longer card. I have a notepad here for list making, and then I have some card sleeves, which I actually had these. These are kind of old. Um, for when you make a finished card, you put them in here 
for people um, to kind of look at the card without like getting their hands on, you know, the embellishments or anything that you've added to kind of, kind of protects it, like protect your sleeve. So I have that kind of in this little wood bin, which I recently got from the Target dollar spot, maybe around the holidays I got it. And it had a little design on here. It was either Valentine's or a Christmas design. I'm not really sure. I think this thing was, yeah, five bucks for this little wooden box. I wish I would have gotten two because it's just the perfect size. And I would love to have two of them because I could have one for like all the blank card making supplies and then another one for like finished cards. And, um, I think that would be really cool to have. So anyway, I have it here on top. And so that is kind of like the end of the, the card making supplies. As we move over here to this side of my craft space, um, I have my multi-needle brother embroidery machine. I still very much do embroidery for people. I often offer services locally um, to do quick embroidery. And I absolutely love this machine. It's probably... Gosh, I'm going to say like six or seven years old. Um, when I got into embroidery, I used a tabletop machine. And then I upgraded like within the first year to this machine. I bought it brand new. And I've only been the only user on it. Um, I do my best to take care of it. It does need to be serviced. It's been a while since it's been serviced. Um, which is kind of like an oil change, but for your embroidery machine. And just for those of you who are curious, it's the PR650. Five and they have like uh, probably one or two more, maybe three models like later than this one. So if that kind of tells you how old it is, um, but it's the Brother Embroidery Entrepreneur machine, and I have my stabilizers in the back there, my clips, clamps, my oil, all of the things for embroidery. Um, my stabilizers that I use the most right here, a lint roller, and my um, my hoops, those are hoops that I use for floating on. Um, oh my gosh, it just left me what they are called. I can't, oh, fast frames, they're my fast frames. See, I actually have one here. I will try to link those down below. So they just make it really easy because you can kind of float your project on it. I know I don't do a lot of embroidery videos. If that's something you guys would like to see, I'm totally happy to um, share that with you. I have like the regular hoops over here. That it comes with and then I have just my regular brother sewing machine right down there and then that's actually a thermal label printer for when I did do a lot of shipping from my online shops that's where the shipping packing label would print and like I said I still sometimes do that um, but it's not it's not as often and so I still have it but um, yeah so that's where that is and then in this corner over here i have um my scrapbook paper of um the united states it's a wood type of thing i fell in love with this this is a kit a diy kit that you can get from the little green bean i'll try to link her down below too she's just one of my favorite makers i love to follow on instagram i don't know if she still carries this specific diy kit but she has like tons of diy kits where the wood is actually like laser cut and then you buy a scrapbook paper that you want or you can paint them whatever i did scrapbooking papers and just all of the colors and th patterns that i love and then you put this um, map of the United States together and it just is perfect. I, I do want to like maybe put like little dots and stuff to all the states I visited because one of my like life goals is to eventually step foot in every single state. Um, not necessarily just passing through like on an airplane connection, but actually like visiting a city or something in every single state to say that I have been there. Um, so I've done a lot of this side of the country, I, and I've been like to Hawaii, but I haven't really gone west. So maybe in the years to come, I will actually get to mapping that out. But I just, I loved it. I, you know, I'm a teacher. I teach English and social studies. So, you know, just, it's kind of funny because I actually had that and I made that before I got into teaching. And I don't know, it's just very much a part of 
I don't know, some of the things that I enjoy. So I love having it in this space. Um, and then in this corner, I have another one of those Ikea islands, but this is the smaller one and it houses my two printers. So on the bottom, it is my normal printer and my bigger paper cutter that I have. And then this printer is my sublimation printer, which I have used, I don't use too often, but I love having it um, for when a project comes up. And then I have um, on here a another glass mat. I actually had this one first and realized it was a little too small. And that's when I wanted the bigger mat, which I was so thankful my mom got me that for, I think it was my birthday. And so um, now I have the two. And this island, it has a drawer, which I also updated the knob to match my cabinets. And I have in here just extra ink. I have paper for the regular printer. I have this fun um, Canon um, printer. This is the box that I got this for. So um, that's kind of cool. I need to get into doing that. I forgot about that. And then I have my latest purchase in the craft room is the heat press that I bought from Heat Press Nation. And I will link this down below. I have a little battery operated fan here because if you're making like five or more shirts, it can get a little hot, um, you know, like you're standing in this little corner. So I just thought, oh, how fun, I'll put that there. I have scissors here ready to use um, because sometimes I just need to cut, I don't know, sometimes I have something on the press, but I don't wanna take it off. And just having these scissors here, it's just something that is handy, so I have a pair here. And then on this side, I have my um, heat um, tape, like specifically for like sublimation to like taping down your projects in place. So I have it in this little handy tray right here. This um, heat press, I absolutely love it. So I had a big one and it was big, black and bulky and I ended up gifting it away because I didn't want it in my craft room. It was just an ugly eyesore of a beast. And I had a smaller pink one gifted to me from Stalls, which I absolutely love, um, but it was a lot smaller. And so I took that one to school and then um, ended up um, taking that one to church where we do like heat press projects and stuff there because in my church I'm crafty as well. So now I have, you know, I have all my machines in all the places. But in my craft room, I loved getting this one because it the, the pink is more like the vibe that I'm going for here. Um, and I wanted that bigger heat press again. For a long time, I was just using my Cricut Easy Press and it while it worked and it was great for like on the go and stuff, which I was on the go like to church and school. So now I have equipment there. Um, it just it just seemed like it took forever. I was like, I just didn't, I didn't have enough space. Like I didn't have a proper space for it. So I decided to make a proper space. And so that's where like the cabinet and the printers with the heat press on top came into play. And this specific one um, is what sold me because it has this tray that slides out and away from the top. I mean, in the camera, it doesn't look like it's that much. But in order to press, like it needs to go like all the way back into there. And I can't tell you, like when I had the press before, like you don't think you're going to like get your arm up in here. But when you're like fixing the shirt, you can see like how like my hand can hit that. So just having this out here and then fixing the shirt, there's like all this space before I actually hit it. So just having this feature is what sold me on purchasing this heat press for the craft room. So um, once it cools off when I'm done with it, I actually um, put it back down into the log position and it's all connected. Like before I was changing the cord and like unplugging and oh, it was a nightmare to like set up. And now I have the space to heat press. And I so I have this like little nook where I can stand separate from the press station and they're all plugged up on different outlets so yes I can have all of that going at once and I have multiple times um 
and when it comes to like crafting and especially around the seasons when I'm crafting for other people. So moving on to the final big thing here in this craft space is my dream box, my pride and joy. I absolutely love this thing. Um, it's changed over the years. I've rearranged it over the last two years. And the way you see it right now in the video um, is the way that it stays. Uh, I absolutely love it set up like this. So it's open, but not open all the way. I do leave my table extended out. So this is a second work surface for me. Um, you can see I have a lower chair here and I'm not going to go, I don't think into too much detail about everything that's in my dream box, but you can see like I've updated the knobs to match all the other knobs in my craft room. I don't have the crown. I just have an Ikea light up there, um, because I have all those things like to display and I just, I don't know. I love having those things up there like create I have extra pins up there um pretty much explains like who I am right mom wife teacher crafter create girl boss all the things um my hand painted globe I did so many years ago and then I have another create with like my Cricut maker um that is another wood um kit actually from the little green bean I think I made this in a video too. And like these little things are interchangeable, but I just leave that one because it's perfect for my craft room decor. So, um, yeah, that is my space. Uh, this is some peel and stick wallpaper that I purchased off of Amazon. I will try to link this specific one down below. And then this is my dream box. So when I'm not doing anything with, the heat press, right? I can open it up. And as you can see, I have all of my threads right there that I use all in that little left panel for embroidery, which is perfect and super handy. I didn't used to have it there. I had it in the, um, the spinning cabinet right next here to my machine. So it's just perfect the way that that works out. And then I have gone on to rearrange my bins. So in these bins, I have like thread, sewing stuff, and ribbons. And I am missing um, a bin cover on there because you can see I put my scrapbook paper covers on it because I like that look. But um, yeah, so I have all my ribbons in these bins by color. So like there's the blues and greens, it's the gray one in there. Um, like all my beige ribbon. Let's see what's in this one. Black and white. Yeah. And then like down here, I have thread for my serger, which I have yet to use, um, like glitter canvas things, which is perfect for embroidery projects. And then in these two bins, I house all of my heat transfer vinyl. I don't have a lot because I do a lot of heat transfer projects. Um, so I buy for the projects I'm doing. And then this just happens to be like what's left over. Um, you know, from different projects and things or like just, you know, a fun roll that I purchased um, because I feel like I'm always using up heat transfer um, material. I do always keep try to keep a roll of white and a roll of black handy, um, but for the most part, yeah, I buy the heat transfer by the project and that's what I have. In all of these other drawers on down, it's all of my jewelry making supplies. That was my biggest first crafting thing that I started with and now I'm down to like these eight or nine bins full of beads and materials I've donated stuff I no longer really am into the jewelry but I've kept my favorites and I've kept all of the tools and like little things um like pliers and stuff that were very expensive to have um in making jewelry just to have um you know for when I need to make something like that then in these little ones, I have more of that glitter canvas and like things for sewing projects, embroidery threads, and that sort of thing. And then at the top here, this is where I keep most of my Cricut cutting mats. And I also keep my silhouette mats here. So for a long time, I was like a big silhouette user and sort of used the Cricut. And that's kind of switched. Now I use the Cricut more and sometimes use the silhouette. Um, I just, I like both machines for different things. I like the softwares for different things. And so there's that. 
In all of these bins, I have all of my adhesive vinyl, and I will just show you that really quick. These are all of the scrap vinyls that I have used over the years, and then I have them also by colors in these bins here. So this is just a great organization system. And within this dream box, you can tell that like I have zones happening um, as we move through this left to right. Okay, so then in these four bins and these top two bins, I have card making supplies. So I told you guys, I have a lot and I have been buying all the card making things but I haven't like made all the cards, which I'm hoping that's coming. Um, so, and then I have, let me see, I'll share what's in here. Oh yeah, all of my inks, right, for card making. And then in here is a stockpile stash of embellishments. And I, I, I have to confess, I did make cards like several years ago, kind of before I even got into the jewelry making phase. Um, and I've just, I've kept all those things and kind of cleaned and cluttered out some of them. I mean, some of them are kind of outdated, but some of them are, you know, like I, you never know. So I, I kept them if they were in good condition, um, you know, embellishments and all of those things. So that's like your everyday ones or whatever. And then up here I have like a mix of Christmas, um, type of like pieces and things like that. So I definitely need to get into making the cards. This year for Christmas, my husband bought the paper sorter from the Create Room company, which is now the owners of this dream box. If you remember at the beginning of the video, I told you they had went through like a rebranding with their name and here is their new tag. You can see like the difference, Create Room, love it. And it's kind of like a little symbol of the dream box right how fun okay so then down here on this table that i have fully extended you can actually put this at a bar height or leave it at this desk height i love it i found this like creamy leathery like chair from a yard sale um somebody was getting rid of for 20 bucks i thought it was a steal i absolutely love this chair it's so comfortable um and so it stays here all the time at this table and then this is the create room cutting mat self healing mat it's made specifically for the work table that goes with the dream box and my husband got this for me this year um so they're always buying me accessories my mom and him um at christmas or my birthday so i absolutely love that and then i have my laptop here and my cricut and so it's ready i have a hot mess of cords back there which i need to kind of tackle um it's just kind of that's what that is um i'm not even gonna that's just that's nice so i need to fix that but so i have my cricut i have it on wheels i can roll it out create which i often do a lot of times for people i just don't always pull out the camera to show you guys and then i have my mat here um, for my projects, I sometimes bring my computer here and I'll watch videos or, you know, like whatever while I'm crafting. And I love, love that. Then on this side of the dream box, I have more lovely crafting materials. I moved all my paints. They were on the other side and I moved them into one of these bins, um, which they've kind of toppled over, but I have them kind of, kind of in a rainbow order. So all of my paints, oops, oh, no, there's a little bump there um, from where it's like got a screw to pop up into it. All of my paints are in this bin. And then in here I have like my Waverly, um, I have a couple of chalk paints. I have my Mod Podges in here. I have like um, just random like letters and other embellishments. I didn't know what to do with these. I don't really use them anymore, but you never know for home decor type projects. Up here, I have all the painting sponges and things. And then in here, I think this is my, yeah, my small collection of Waverly chalk paint in that bin. And then I have in here um, all of my clay making supplies. I used to make clay beads. I got into that. For a little stint of time so there's like a kit and things in there and then in here i have like watercolor paints and a really nice brush set that i haven't really used 
but it was on like a wish list and someone gifted to me so I have it and yeah sometimes it's just fun to break out the watercolors and paint um, and then moving into these bins I have like all of the mink foiling things I have two bins of felt um, which I have separate from my fabric because a lot of times I don't use that with sewing projects and then I have more like crafty bits and then it goes into like small wooden pieces that I could use for like DIYs or Dollar Tree crafts um, pipe cleaners my kids tend to get into those I have lots of stamps here for um, wax stamps so I do plan to do something with this I used to use these in jewelry making and recently rediscovered that I had those in the garage and brought them in and then I have tons of washi tape here and then a couple little punches that I use the most and then in my panel over here I have like little embellishments bits and bobs bells buttons that sort of thing I do have some infusible ink some more Mod Podge and then I have like business not business but like office stuff like rubber bands clips paper clips and then down here I have like things I use or have used for like um, upholstery like when I've done like fabric projects where you have to like cover the button and that sort of thing and I have like tacks in there and then um, extra wheels just random in that little spot so this is let me back up so you guys can see my dream box when it is fully extended and open and I'm just like in my little happy crafty place oops I'm hitting the door yep so I have my table there so I can sit and do projects and then I have this table that I leave open all the time to sit and do projects or sometimes I do editing. I kind of use this space as like a desk space as well. And then like sometimes for crafting, I, I intend to like do overhead crafting here because the lighting is better and all of that. So, and then I'm just gonna close these doors back up because that is the way that I leave it. Um, and I've really tried to like get in the habit of like clean crafting. And I know like some people are like, what is that? You know, if you're not making a mess, you're not really crafting. Trust me, I get messy in here a lot. Um, but when I'm done, I really like just having a nice, clean, organized workspace to like come back to and get inspired in. So yeah, this is my craft room. If you've stuck along, stuck along, if you have stayed this long in the video I totally appreciate you um, for watching and let me know in the comments what you think if you have any suggestions on how I should organize it it's not a huge huge space um, but it's bigger than like what I had before um, when I first got into crafting years ago before I had my kids I was like in a bedroom and then they quickly occupied them so it has evolved over the years, like from what I've had and what I've started with. Um, but, you know, I, I would always love more space. So this is it. And back to this thing. I will eventually figure out what I'm going to do with it. <laughs> it's just kind of like in the way there. It is kind of tucked off to the side, but it could be like much more open there. Um, I don't have anything here purposely because of the door when it opens. It just kind of goes right flush against that. So it's just kind of like dead space to me. Um, so yeah, this is my crafty happy place. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you can be notified the next time I upload a video, which I'm hoping is maybe a card for you guys or um, maybe a planning video or the latest projects that I'm working on. All right, I will talk to you guys in the next one and hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.